The shadow knows. <laughs> the shadow, the serious character who devotes his life to righting wrongs, protecting the innocent, and punishing the guilty, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town, student of science, and master of other people's minds. Using advanced methods that may ultimately become available to all law enforcement agencies, Cranston is known to criminals and evildoers as the Shadow. Never seen, only heard, as haunting to superstitious minds, as a ghost, as inevitable, as a guilty conscience. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the unseen voice belongs. Today's story, Murder in E-flat. Chief, I, I thought it was cut off. Yeah, that's the place. That new swing joint on 50th Street. Had yeah, a bit of us. Oh, nobody seems to know what happened. The band was playing and the joint just blew up. Well, we don't know yet how many were hurt. Our thing was we found a note nailed over the bar. To make what sense, though. Read it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, here it is. It says, The only real music is the music of silence. Yeah, funny business. Okay, I'll report back to headquarters as soon as the ambulance is coming. Go on, Henry. Pass that car in front. But, my dear, I can't without crossing that white line and decide... Oh, now, then make him pull over. Oh, Henry, blow your horn. But you're not supposed to blow your horn in the city, my dear. You know that. The anti-noise committee says... I don't that care it... what the anti-noise committee says. Blow your horn and make that fellow get over. Just as you say, my dear. Yes, officer. I was driving about 50 yards behind their car. Yeah? They started to swing out of line and blew their horn, and then it happened. This awful explosion. I tell you, I've yeah, never in all my... Yeah, hmm? Where'd you get this note? After the explosion, I noticed it lying in the front seat beside me. Somebody must have thrown it in through the window. What do you suppose it means, officer? Uh, let's look at it again. Hmm. Let this be a warning to you. Auto horns are playthings of the devil. Silence. What does it mean, officer? I don't know, mister. But if I were you, I'd forget I had a horn. You know, Margot, there's something very peculiar about these bombings. Mysterious explosions, I believe the paper here calls them. There's another one last night. You mean that crater that blew up in the river? Yes, Lamont, I was reading about it. And the paper says they found a note mailed to a nearby dock. Something about silence is the golden token of true peace. Odd. It sounds like some crank. Yes. Odd and sinister. Silence. That word has appeared in every note. Silence. The only other clue that has been found at all three bombings is a piece of U-shaped metal. Now, I wonder if... Margot. Yes, Lamont? You know what a tuning fork looks like, don't you? Why, well, certainly. It's shaped like a U. Exactly. A piece of metal shaped like a U. Look at this picture here in the paper. Divers found that in the hold of the bomb crater. Yes, it certainly looks like a tuning fork, all right, but I don't see what... Neither do I, Margot. Yet I feel there's a link between the word silence, these tuning forks, and the bombings. Yes. And if there is a link, Margot, I've got a hunch that this city may be in for one of the most terrifying ordeals it has ever experienced. 
Then you believe there'll be more of these awful bombings? I don't know what to believe, Margot. I don't know what... Stop plane to Chicago, now ready at gate four. Non-stop plane to Chicago, now ready at gate four. Goodbye, John. Don't forget to wire me. Bye, dear. See you Thursday. Bye, Mother. Goodbye, son. I hope you have a smooth flight. Shall we go, Mary? Oh, let's wait, Mother. I-, I love to watch them take off. John promised to wave from the plane. He's going to sit on this side. Well, just as you say, dear, but I must admit that the roar of those motors always makes me a bit nervous. Read all about the latest mystery bombing. No warning silence found at Central Airport. Extra, extra latest mystery bombing. Stop it, police. Is there traffic officer O'Grady found the bomb? Yes, Commissioner Weston. He was stuck in a refuse basket. And this note here was pasted on the police phone box next to the basket. I see it. The war of traffic is a war of doom. Silence. 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 That infernal words, but in every note we found. Yes, sir. What's the laboratory report, Sergeant? What explodes the bomb? The bomb's attached to a photoelectric cell. One of these here uh, U-shaped pieces of metal like uh-huh. you finding at all the bombing. I see. Well, how's it work? Well, it's sort of like this, Commissioner. The laboratory says that this U-shaped piece of metal is a tuning fork, an E-flat tuning fork. Yes? Well, this here tuning fork is placed so that when the sound of E-flat vibrates, it breaks the light beam of the photoelectric cell that's attached to the bomb. And when the light beam is broken, the circuit's closed, the bomb goes off. Uh-huh. I think I see what you mean. Just like just like your body breaks a light beam and opens the doors of somebody's new hotel. Yes, sir, yes. That's the idea. Uh-huh. There were sounds reported just before each of those bombings. The sound of that trumpet, that auto horn, and that foghorn, and that freighter, and the noise of those airplane motors. Yes, sir. They could have done it all right. Whoever thought that one up is dumb, like Einstein. But I, I still don't get these notes, these warnings about silence. But there must be some reason why... I... Hello, Commissioner Weston speaking. Hello, Commissioner. A shadow. Right you are, Commissioner. Well, what do you want? I'm busy, very busy, and I'm afraid I haven't any time to... I know, Commissioner. These bombings are getting a bit out of hand, aren't they? And I suppose you know all about them. No, not all. These pieces of U-shaped metal you've been finding... Tuning forks, aren't they? How did you know that? Never mind. Aren't they? Yes. If that's what our laboratory calls them. E-flat tuning forks. Hooked up to a photoelectric cell attached to the bomb. When the sound vibrates the fork, it passes in front of the cell's light beam, and that... And that closes the circuit and explodes the bomb. Very neat, eh, Commissioner? Very. Anything else I can do for you? Just one thing more, Commissioner. Yes? Do you realize what all this means? Why, of Each course of I... the notes has contained the word silence. You must broadcast a general warning to the city at once. Use the radio, use the newspapers. Use any means at your command. But warn the people immediately that there must be absolute silence until the murderer is caught. They must not play any musical instruments, blow their auto horns. In fact, they must not do anything to make a loud noise of any kind that might set off another of these tuning fork bombs. For the penalty may be death. Right here, they found one of the bombs. Hidden in one of these trash baskets. Yeah. Imagine it right here at one of the busiest corners in the city. I tell you, it's enough to give it a creep. It certainly is. Look up the avenue there. Here it is the middle of the day and not a car in sight. Boy, I haven't had my car out of the garage since the police commissioner broadcast that warning. Think of it. He said even a squeaking brake might send you to Kingdom Come. Well, I can tell you, Kingdom Come would be better than this. They don't find the guy that's planting these bombs soon. The whole town's gone off its nut. You're telling me. I haven't slept in four nights. It's awful silence. It's like a wet blanket over your face. Day after day, and nothing stops. Stop pacing that floor, Robert. You're making me so nervous I could scream. You nervous? That's good. How about me? I tell you, I can't stand the silence much longer. I tell you, I can't stand. Quiet, Robert. Remember Commissioner Weston's warning. No one knows where the bombs are planted. Even a shout might... I know, I know. Even a shout might be an E-flap. A note of death. That's what they're calling it now. It's silly, isn't it? But what do they call this? This awful tomb we're living in. Quiet, Robert, please. Come on. We're going to get out of this town. Stop packing. We'll leave you on the first train. I don't know where we're going, but we're going anywhere. 
Any luck, Margot? No, Lamont. You? None. Commissioner Weston has already checked all the music stores, but I... I still feel he might have overlooked one. Several of the stores I checked had sold tuning forks recently, but only one was an E-flat. And that was purchased by the Board of Education. It wouldn't look hopeless, isn't it, Lamont? Not yet, Margot. Not until we've checked every music store in the city. Now, here's the list of stores. We'll separate again. You take these I've marked in the list, and I'll visit the others. Yes, Lamont. We must hurry, Margot. Every minute moves us closer to the next explosion. God, yeah, isn't it? All morning as I walked these deserted streets, I felt like I was moving through some city of the dead. Yes, it's it's like a plague. A plague of silence. But we must be on our way, Margot. It's not a moment to lose. I'll meet you at the Andrews Music Store, the first store we visited this morning. Yes, yes, I know the one. I'll see you there. Oh, sir, we haven't sold an E-flat tuning fork in months. Is there anything else, sir? Oh, miss? We're wholesale, you see. We only sell to music schools and such. Even they don't buy tuning forks very often. What's that, mister? Tuning forks? Uh, no, we just handle sheet music, radios, and records. Maybe you'd like some sheet music. And uh, what can I do for you, miss? Nothing, thank you. I'm just waiting for someone, if you don't mind. Oh, no, not at all. By the way, weren't you in here this morning? Yes, I was. Yes, I remember you now. You were with a gentleman who wanted to know if we'd sold any tuning forks lately. Yes, that's right. You said you hadn't. Yes, and after you left, I did remember one sale, but that was to one of our regular customers, and it was it was a long time ago. That wouldn't be what you... No. Were. No, I suppose not. No. Dr. Badeau is a very fine man. Fine musician, too. He's bought a number of musical instruments from us. Of course, it did strike me a bit odd. Uh, odd? What was odd? Well, Dr. Bedeau wanting all of those tuning forks for the same pitch. E-flat, I believe it was. E-flat? Yes, but you know how musicians are. Surely you don't... Oh, no, of course not, but I... I suppose I should see this Dr. Bedeau just for the record, you know. Uh, would you like his address, then? Yes, if you'd be so kind. Yes, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll write it down for you. Dr. Andre Bedeau, 2218 West 9th Street. Street. Well, thank you. And if the gentleman I'm waiting for should arrive while I'm gone, tell him to wait. Uh, yes, yes. His I name will... is Lamont Cranston. If I'm delayed, tell him to meet me at Dr. Bedeau's. 2218, yes, yes. Uh, yes? Dr. Bedeau? Yes, that is right. Dr. Bedeau. Doctor of Music. Bachelor of Art. And you, my dear? My name is Margot Lane, Doctor. I'm a voice student. Oh, musician. And so beautiful. <laughs> Do come in. Thank you. This is my studio. Oh, it's charming. You teach here? No, oh, no, no. I, I seldom teach, my dear. I'm composer. Great composer. <laughs> Though I'm afraid that is still my own little secret. <laughs> but then you wouldn't have time for a simple student like myself. No, no, no. On the contrary, my dear. It has always, always been my special pleasure to encourage real talent. Especially a beautiful talent. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, well, that's very nice. But I'm not awfully talented, Monsieur Bedeau. I, I don't really believe you'd be interested. Oh, no, but I have already decided I would be interested. Most interested. <laughs> but, sir... Uh, you are just in time for a treat. A rare treat. Well, I'm afraid I must go now. I just remembered an appointment. You should have remembered that before you interrupted my work. Now that you are here, you shall remain on until it is my pleasure to dismiss you. But you, you can't do that. Quiet. Sit down. There. I did not ask you to disturb me. But now that you are here, you shall share a secret with me. <laughs> you like secrets, no? <laughs> Most young women like secrets, but can't keep them. <laughs> I rather think you shall keep this one, my dear. Shadow. Yeah, what is that? What What did you say? What? Oh, oh. <laughs> you are wasting your breath, my dear. Really, you are. The studio is soundproof. Completely soundproof. And now for my secret. You, <laughs> you see this beautiful electric organ? Yes. Yes, of course, this but I... electric organ shall reveal my secret. My greatest composition. I shall play it for you now. 
on this beautiful organ. <laughs> oh, pardon me, just a moment, my dear. The door seems to have blown open. <laughs> ah, the turn of the lock will guard us against the king Don't lock that door, you hear me? Let me out of here. Quiet, quiet. Really, you don't seem to realize what a great honor I am to sport bestow on you. For you shall be my first and the last to hear my greatest composition, my symphony of Philo no. in E flat. No. Uh, do I frighten you, my child? <laughs> I'm so sorry. But you are my uninvited guest, aren't you? My only guest. <laughs> the lighting is quite poor for shadows, my dear. There are no shadows in my studio. No, oh, one thing more, B. Before I play my symphony for you, you see the black box on that pedestal there? Answer me, do you? Yes. Yes, I see it. That box is my invention. It is a bomb. The same as others I have placed about the city. And it shall permit you and me to die. You see, my dear, into the final climax of my symphony, I have written the final climax of life itself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but enough of this program notes. Yeah, let us begin the performance. Yeah. Listen, my dear. Listen to the pale beauty of the whole tone. Truly a feast, isn't it? A feast for just the two of us. <laughs> Three, Dr. Bendo. Three of us. Hello. He told you where I was. Three. Three. Yo, who speaks? I am the shadow. Yes, the shadow? Oh, yes, yes. Of course, my, my inner voice. My shadow. <laughs> the shadow of my poor, weak conscience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, shadow. The three of us. Yes, yes, that's right. We've had an exciting time lately, haven't we, Bertho? You, the master. I... Your shadow. <laughs> it's quite exciting, my shadow. <laughs> and it has led us to victory. Yes, we have at last won our war on noise. The silent city pays tribute to our cause. But why, Bado? Why have we waged this war on the city? Why these bombings? Why this terror? Uh, you forget so soon. Uh, what a poor conscience you are, shadow. <laughs> but once more, I will tell you... We have been waging the war, the war of wars, the war for peace. For only the true peace is a simple peace of silence. Yes, but no, but... Quiet, quiet, my conscience. Silence is the only way to fight the unhappiness in the world today. This world of ours with its war, its chaos, its noise. Yes, yes, above all, its noise. How many of our bombs are still unexploded, Bado? How many? Three throughout the city, my forgetful shadow. And one here on the pedestal, waiting to play its part in my symphony of silence. Waiting for me to play E flat. But the three in the city, Bado, where did we leave them? Oh, what a poor conscience you are, Shadow. <laughs> One's conscience should not forget so often. Yeah, but I, I will forgive you. Don't you remember the one we left in the elevator shaft of the state building? Yes, I remember now. Very clever of us, wasn't it, Bado? <laughs> and another we planted behind the timer's bell in the sports armory. Oh, but of course. How stupid of me to forget. And the third, in the Grand Terminal. Three noisy places, without a doubt. Yeah, but noisy no longer. The city is as silent as a tomb. And so long as it remains silent, so too will the bombs. Yeah, but now. Now my symphony reaches its climax. My work is finished. Listen to the compelling beauty of the finale. Hear, hear those old tones. Marching up, up, up. Yes. <laughs> it is the work of a master. I, Beto, the greatest of them all. And now, now the final suspension. And, and the final retribution. The finale of my symphony in silence. Indeed! There, there, Margo. Just rest a minute. Everything is all right. But, but the explosion, Lamont. There was no explosion. But, Dr. Bedeau, look. Lying there across the keyboard. Is he... Yes. Dead. Quite dead. 
It was Badeau's body pressing against the keyboard that caused the rumbling. You thought was an explosion. But I, I still don't understand. What happened? All the time I was talking to Badeau, I was standing beside the pedestal on which he placed the bomb. When he started to play the organ, I disconnected the photoelectric cell from the bomb, making it harmless. But Badeau is dead. Heart failure, my dear Margot. A victim of his own hypnosis. He was so sure that the explosion would occur that it did in his distorted mind. Oh, thank heaven it's all over. Yes, the symphony of silence is over. The terror is ended. Once more, the city can return to its normal life. Once more, its people are safe to work and play, laugh and cry. Free from the terror that has nearly driven them mad. Yes, and once more, man has learned that there is only one musician who can play the cosmic music of silence and sound. The master musician of them all. The composer of life itself. <laughs> Let no man tempt you into crime. For crime is like a strangling serpent. It crushes him who feeds it most. Beware, lest the serpent of crime ensnare you. <laughs> <laughs>